Many of you have been wondering why I've been focusing on Jada and Will Smith instead of the war in Ukraine or the war in Palestine. You've probably also wondered how I've been able to reach the kind of conclusions that I've been able to reach with regards to Jada and Will based on such a little bit of information that has been revealed to the world at large. Especially because they are a Hollywood couple after all. And let's face it, there's very little to be trusted when it comes to Hollywood. And there are many rumors that are making their circles with regards to the two possibly being bisexual and also being part of the dark occult. Whilst I can't speak to the fact that they could possibly be part of an occult right now, I can, however, focus on the narcissism element, which is what is being blatantly displayed to the public based on the interviews that Jada has been doing, as well as her conduct in general with regards to her husband. And so in today's video, we are going to connect the dots between the Jada and Will saga, as well as the wars that are currently taking place all over the world. Because it's all connected, it all has to do with narcissism. The second thing we are going to do is to explore how narcissism holds the dark matrix in place. Why? Because narcissism makes the dark matrix go round. And lastly, we are going to explore how to dismantle the dark matrix using spiritual tools. This is so important. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for us to understand that narcissism is a spiritual phenomenon and needs to be addressed from a spiritual perspective over and above all other measures that are being you know, taken into consideration. This is something that narcissists definitely don't want you to know. And as you know, how narcissists operate is that when they hate something, when they feel threatened by something, they simply undermine it. They act as if that thing is not important. They ridicule it. They dismiss it. They trivialize it. And this is one of the reasons why this channel is actually shadow banned. It's because this kind of information should not be going out into the public. They cannot afford for humanity to understand the true nature of narcissism, which is spiritual. And it needs to be addressed from a spiritual perspective. And if we understood well enough how spiritual narcissism is, it would be so easy for us to literally pick up our spiritual texts. Because even the most religious of them all, they have all the basic tools that are required to actually counter narcissism. So all it would take is for humanity to begin to take up those spiritual tools that have been provided by their own religions to counter this negative force. Because all it is, it's simply the devil. Literally, it's simply Satan. It's simply demons that we are dealing with. Another reason why it's important for us to understand the spiritual nature of narcissism is that when we address it from a spiritual perspective and begin to chop it from its roots, then we will not have that problem of it resurfacing in other areas of society. We would have literally dismantled it. We would have literally set ourselves and humanity free by addressing narcissism from a spiritual perspective because any other measure that we apply when it comes to addressing narcissism is a surface level form of solution it only fixes the symptoms but it doesn't address the narcissism so when you get rid of the narcissist in your life and you don't do spiritual work what happens is that you are getting rid of that person but you are not casting the demons you are not dismantling the demons those demons are going to continue going somewhere else so the demons need to be sent to hell that's what needs to happen to the demons they need to be sent to hell so that when the person moves along they do not have any more power to be able to continue to deceive other people in the same way that they have deceived you now let's look at how jada and will's saga is connected to the wars that are taking place all over the world Remember, celebrities are archetypes of the collective, and so that means they are an exaggerated version of an everyday person down the road. And here's the thing, perhaps behind the scenes, things are completely different from how they appear in the public's eye. But based on what is appearing in the public's eye with regards to the two, what we are seeing here is that the two are playing 
archetypical roles of a narcissist and an empath with Jada playing the role of the narcissist and Will playing the role of the empath. Now, can you imagine how many empathic type of men out here in the world are in relationships with a Jada type of a woman? And can you imagine how that many of them will never ever leave that relationship because they will never understand what would have happened to them? Can you imagine what happens to the children that come out of such kind of a relationship? And of course, we have those cases where the roles are reversed, such as with Derek Jackson and Denia Jackson. Derek Jackson, being the man there, is a narcissist, whilst his soon-to-be ex-wife is the empath. These are majority of relationships in the world today. Can you imagine how conflict-ridden such types of relationships are? Can you imagine how toxic an environment such type of relationships create? That means children born and raised in such kind of environments become either very broken human beings or they become very toxic human beings, as in they become narcissistic and psychopathic themselves. And the cycle continues to perpetuate itself until someone puts a stop to it. And what do narcissists, psychopaths and sociopaths love more than anything in the world? They love war, chaos and destruction. They will orchestrate situations where war becomes necessary. It's that divide and conquer tactic. They will also participate in those wars because they enjoy killing just for fun. And they will sponsor wars. They will provide the necessary weapons, the vehicles, the armory, everything that's required to have that war running as effectively as possible. And these are narcissists born and raised in a narcissistic environment which has been created or terraformed by the narcissistic demons which are representatives of Satan himself. And so the Jada and Will saga, just like the Derek Jackson and Denea Jackson saga, as well as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard saga, and of course, um, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry saga, this saga is all about humanity. These stories are actually telling a story about humanity. You understand? They are telling an exaggerated version of what actually happens in everyday life. And what they are telling us about in a very subtle way is the narcissistic force that drives a society, that drives relationships, that drives toxicity. They are telling us about the narcissistic web that makes the dark matrix go round. Let's explore how narcissism drives the dark matrix. So the dark matrix is basically a false reality, an illusory reality, an alternative reality. You will understand this false reality if you ever enter into a relationship with a narcissist. And what it feels like is a disconnection from reality, a type of dissociation. You feel detached, you feel numb, you feel lost, you feel confused. This false reality is created by narcissists and it's created whenever a narcissist interacts with a normal or an empathic human being. Remember, narcissists are low vibrational frequency entities. They are demons. And so they don't have access to reality. The only way that they get to interact with human beings is if they get to alter those human beings' reality so that it becomes a false one. So, And how they do that is they lower your vibrational frequency. They taper you down into that low vibrational frequency state where you can then be easily accessible to them. How they do this at the mildest level is they can give you an evil eye or they can just throw you a weird salad. So that basically leaves you confused, that leaves you intimidated, that leaves you um, foggy and just paranoid. That still is a way through which they get to lower your vibrational frequency. And then at the most extreme level is when they, of course, engage in that fully-fledged abuse towards you. That's when they gaslight you. That's when they are literally just being projecting towards you. They are just being verbally abusive or even physically abusive towards you. They are basically lowering that vibrational frequency 
so that you become an easy food source for them. Now, here's something that I really, really want you to catch. If you miss anything on this video, this should be the one thing that you are able to at least walk away with. Narcissism isn't just a person that is toxic or a group of people that are toxic or having a mental health disorder. Narcissism is a stream of consciousness. It is the antichrist stream of consciousness. That's what narcissism is. So it is a spirit. It is literally a whole stream of consciousness. That means you could literally compare it to another race of human beings. You understand. But from a spiritual perspective. Or to put it more simply, narcissism is an anti-human stream of consciousness. I think that is more understandable. It is a spirit that manifests itself as many, many different types of people. But it is a spirit more so than anything else. You understand. So when you are dealing with a narcissist there, when you are looking at that person, you're not really dealing with a person per se. You are dealing with a spirit behind that person. But this is a stream of consciousness. It is an anti-human stream of consciousness that hates human beings and feeds off of their energy. It puts on the human form so that it can camouflage itself, so that it can easily access human beings for feeding. It hijacks the incarnation process or what is called the ensoulment process so that it can become born as a human being into a human family. So whenever it is that you are dealing with a narcissist, of course, you are always dealing with someone's child. You understand? And this is a joke, an inside joke that I have here that says the devil in this world is someone's child. And that's how they are able to also protect themselves because the minute you point out the devil to say, but that's a devil there, that's not a human being, it's going to be, how can that be a devil? Because it's someone's child. The devil is smart like that. And so this evil stream of consciousness called the Antichrist stream of consciousness is what I would like to call the dark matrix. It is an evil form of consciousness. It is a distorted state of being. It is a false version of reality. And how it works is very simple. Every single narcissist in the world controls the reality of people in their lives. They make sure that that environment is kept at a very, very low vibrational frequency. Also draw energy from those people in their lives, taking some for themselves and releasing some to be taken over by the demonic entities in the spirit realms. And in this way, all the narcissists around the world form an energetic grid of the dark matrix. With the devil being right at the top of that dark hierarchical structure and demonic beings right underneath him, and right underneath those demonic beings are institutions and corporations that are hiding the demonic beings. And right at the bottom of that hierarchical structure, you have your everyday narcissist. I call them the foot soldiers of the dark matrix. And they occupy every single part of society. So from the poorest person all the way to the most richest person in the world. There are black occultist narcissists. There are religious narcissists, there are spiritual narcissists, and then we also have your agnostic narcissists. They are everywhere. And they operate like a hive mind because it is the same mind. It is the same stream of consciousness, the consciousness of the devil, the anti-human entity. And their agenda is always the same, to steal, kill, and destroy humanity. And here's the thing, you can call this antichrist stream of consciousness or anti-human stream of consciousness, whatever name works for you. You can call them aliens, you can call them demons, you can call them jinn, you can call them satanists, whatever it is that works for you. As long as you are able to understand exactly what it is that we are talking about here. So there are three streams of consciousness in the world. And the first stream, of course, is the narcissistic stream. The second stream is the empathic stream. And the third stream is the normal human being stream of consciousness. Now, these three streams are the only streams that 
currently occupy the world. And so you need to be able to be aware which stream of consciousness it is that you are interacting with. You also need to understand that the narcissistic stream will always camouflage and hide itself among the normal people as well as the empathic people. So it will pretend to be a normal or an empathic person. But when you understand that when the Bible was saying we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities in the spirit realm, what the Bible was actually saying there was that human beings are representative of spiritual forces behind the scenes. When you understand that you are never ever dealing with just a human being, but you are rather dealing with spirits which they represent, you will also begin to understand when Jesus was saying, you will know them by the fruits that they bear. I hope it was Jesus. If it wasn't Jesus, then it was Paul. But when the Bible says you will know them by the fruits that they bear, that means the way that a person behaves, the way that the person talks, they are actually revealing the kind of spirits that are at work within them. Then you will be able to exercise discernment with regards to these dark and demonic spirits camouflaging as human beings. And of course, energy doesn't lie. There's always something off with a narcissist's energy. There's always something that just doesn't quite add up about their energy. I myself have experienced this and many people, hundreds of people that I've dealt with have also confirmed the very same thing. When you deal with a narcissist, especially in the beginning, there's always that thing within you that says something is not right here. But because you do not want to entertain anything that has to do with things that are beyond the third and fourth dimension, then you find yourself just thinking, hmm, I'm probably imagining things. But in truth, energy doesn't lie. Now, let's talk solutions. Number one, when you begin to understand that countering narcissistic abuse, especially the one that you have specifically experienced in your life, when you begin to understand that this countermeasure that you are putting in place is actually a spiritual calling, then you would have begun to take a step towards dismantling the dark matrix. You will be understanding that that one narcissist in your life is actually a reflection of the collective stream of consciousness that has to do with narcissism. And so you will be understanding that by overcoming the demons behind that particular one narcissist, you are actually overcoming the whole lot of narcissists that are part of that particular stream of consciousness. In the same way that you as an individual are a microcosmic reflection of the macrocosm with regards to humanity. The narcissist is also a microcosmic reflection of the macrocosm of narcissism. Therefore, your healing is a contribution towards the healing of humanity. When you send the demons behind the narcissist to hell, what happens there is that the narcissistic stream of consciousness is losing its soldiers, it's losing its labor force. It's getting weaker and weaker. Number two, you take up the armor of God and fight a spiritual battle. That means whatever spiritual group or religion you are part of, you need to take up whatever tools of the light that are available to you there. And you need to begin to use them to counter the evil forces of life that are attacking you. For example, if you are part of Islam, you will do what they do there to tackle the jinn. And if you are a Christian, you will, of course, you know, cast demons or you will declare God's judgment upon the demonic entities and the fallen angels. Many people will mislead you and tell you that all you need to do is just focus on positive vibrational frequencies and that will be enough to counter the darkness. But here's the thing. If that was all that was necessary, then every sacred text in the world would have said that. But instead, every sacred text in the world is saying the opposite. Every sacred text in the world is actually encouraging you to take up your spiritual armor and fight a spiritual battle. And that's because we are in the midst of a spiritual war. And for us to ignore this war, we do it to our own detriment. Yes, we are fifth dimensional beings. We have access to higher information that has to do with that understanding of our oneness with the cosmos, the universe and all of life. And we understand that everything is a reflection of us and that there is no out there. Everything is only a mirror of who we are. We, we get that. 
and at the same time we are able to embrace dichotomies and in this particular case we understand that at the same time whilst we are occupying the third dimension which is a physical realm a realm of duality that means we are here to learn very difficult lessons if we should put it that way we are here to have very very difficult encounters we are here to literally share the space with forces that are in complete opposition to who we are and so if you are a being of light you absolutely need to counter the force of darkness that you will be dealing with if you are a being of true organic reality you absolutely need to counter forces that are synthetic because if you don't they will counter you they will erase you they will eliminate you if you don't use the light to take out the darkness the darkness will overtake you as the light now when we look at our lord and savior jesus christ we understand that he never played love and lights when it comes to uh, the dark forces of life he literally called them out for what they are he called them vipers he called them sons of the devil he called them sons of darkness belial and a whole lot of nasty things and why did he do that because he was making it clear that as a being of light he has no business with darkness he is not here to try and you know walk on eggshells around dark personalities he was not here to try and appease and tolerate and accommodate dark personalities he was not about making room for darkness in his life because he understood exactly what darkness was all about darkness will take that small crack that you create for it and it will use it for its maximum benefit and that benefit is your destruction there's no love and light there's no namaste there's no kumbaya there's no living together as one when it comes to narcissists and dark personalities there's no such thing narcissists don't have teachable moments there's no win win there's no mutually beneficial compromises there's no symbiosis they either going to destroy you or they going to destroy both themselves and you as long as at the end you are destroyed and so you pick up your spiritual tools from your sacred text and then you begin to fight your battle like no one's business your ascension as well as the ascension of humanity depends on this and of course this will include psychic protection and boundaries number 3 we get in touch with reality and the first step to getting in touch with reality is getting in touch with what hurts within us what is it that is causing us so much anxiety what is it that's causing us so much pain within our bodies and within our minds and we then practice presence we become present with that pain that discomfort whatever it is that we are going through we becoming present with it because by being present with ourselves we are actually inviting the presence of god the divine to be present with us and that is how we transcend the pain and the negativity that will be circulating in our bodies so whenever it is that we, we are in a low state of being in a low vibrational frequency instead of attacking ourselves or criticizing ourselves or abandoning ourselves avoiding and pretending that we are not feeling what we are feeling what we instead do is we acknowledge all of that and we become present with it all right and what usually happens is that after a little while that negative energy begins to transmute and to basically be transformed into positive energy if you are only starting out on such kind of work it might take a little while before you begin to feel that relief for a prolonged period of time but you just keep at it eventually all of that will no longer be there or it will be significantly reduced and the gift of this kind of work is that you are now no longer afraid of your own pain your own shadows your own wounded child your own discomfort all right you are no longer afraid of negative emotions you are able to be fully present with yourself so this is also still part of that um uh, a battle that you are fighting it's still part of that warfare that you are engaging in you are fighting for your own reality in this particular way so instead of running away you are becoming the brave soldier that faces the darkness within themselves and the more you do this the more your connection to true organic reality 
is restored, the more you are now back in touch with that truth of who you are as the divine being of light that you are, the light that dissolves darkness, the light that lights every man and woman that cometh into the world. Your true identity is restored as the oneness with all of life. You are now in touch with that reality and so nothing phases you. You are able to engage with that fifth dimension, um, that fifth dimensional aspect of who you are that is able to see the oneness whilst at the same time you are very much aware of the darkness that is surrounding you and the discomfort that you know surges through your body from time to time and you are able to deal with both sides of reality with greater confidence and ease number four yes you raise that vibrational frequency you enjoy those high vibrational frequency states you do whatever it is that it takes to raise and keep the vibrational frequency high you know, that makes it such that you are a match to the right kind of things that the divine wants to bring your way. And also, of course, it makes it a bit more difficult for um, the lower vibrational frequencies to interact with you. But the wonderful thing now is that you are not just, you know, having a high vibrational frequency without discernment and without knowing how to wage spiritual warfare. You forgive the devil, but that doesn't mean you pretend that the devil is not the devil. And that also doesn't mean that you pretend that the devil is your friend or is someone that can potentially be your friend. Because in the devil's realm, there's no friendship, you understand. And so you're not going to try and show the devil how much of a light being that you are by compromising yourself and trying to be super nice and wonderful and accommodating, hoping that one day the devil can change his mind and become a wonderful, lovely human being. The Bible says resist the devil. I really believe that means reject the devil, you know, say no to him and he will flee from you. So that is very clear with regards to how it is that we ought to be interacting with beings of darkness. So that means stay as far away from them as possible and let God deal with them. So when you are casting out demons, you are doing it in your own private space. You are not doing it to a person. All right. So you are not giving them your energy. You are not feeding them with your attention. 